Welcome back to Spore and Sprout. In this video, I'm going to show you two different ways to grow Cordyceps militaris. First, I will show you the bulk bin method, and then I will show you the individual jar method. Cordyceps militaris is one of the most expensive mushrooms in the world due to the medicinal compounds that they contain. Nucleosides, polysaccharides, sterols, proteins, amino acids, and polypeptides can be found in Cordyceps militaris. The first step is to create a large amount of liquid culture. I like to use one tablespoon of honey dissolved into 600 milliliters of warm water. Using a magnetic stir bar is recommended to speed up the process. Pressure sterilize the honey water at 15 psi for 30 minutes. After the sterilized honey water has come to room temperature, it is now time to inoculate it with Cordyceps militaris liquid culture. A breeder will isolate two ascospores and mate them together to form a new cell line. I recommend that you purchase your liquid culture from Ryan Paul Gates at Terrestrial Fungi. The master syringe you receive from him should be immediately stored inside the refrigerator until use. Now inoculate your sterilized honey water with 1 to 2 milliliters of the liquid culture. The liquid culture should now be incubated in the dark at no higher than 70 degrees Fahrenheit. After about 5 days of using the magnetic stir bar, the liquid culture should look something like this. Once the liquid culture is ready to be used, you can start making the substrate and broth. Start by blending together 1 liter of water, 2 tablespoons of light malt extract, and 2 tablespoons of yeast extract. Add 5 cups of brown rice and the broth to an instant rice cooker and use the brown rice function.
After the cycle has finished, you will have to shut it off yourself or it will keep it warm and burn the bottom. While it is still hot, open up the rice cooker in front of a laminar flow hood and stir it with a sterile spoon. Remove the insert from the instant rice cooker and allow it to cool down completely in front of the laminar flow hood. While the rice is cooling down, you can start prepping your 16 quart Sterilite container. Poke a hole in each of the four corners to allow for fresh air exchange. We will cover these holes after adding the rice. You will need to wipe down the bin with bleach water and isopropyl alcohol because we will not be pressure sterilizing it. After the rice has cooled down to room temperature, it is now time to add 250 milliliters of liquid culture. Wipe the bin off one last time with isopropyl alcohol and then add all of the rice to the bottom in an even layer. Now just cover each hole on the lid with one layer of micropore tape. This bin will now be incubated in complete darkness for 3 days at no higher than 70 degrees Fahrenheit. If you don't have a laminar flow hood, this second method is going to be better suited for you. We will be using the same substrate and broth but just in different measurements. For this batch I don't need a whole liter of broth so I'm going to cut it in half and use 500 milliliters of water, one tablespoon of light malt extract and one tablespoon of yeast extract. Measure out 35 grams of brown rice. Now just add 45 milliliters of the broth to the jar of rice, not including the foam.
The next step is to pressure sterilize the jar at 15 PSI for 45 minutes. Once the jar is cooled down to room temperature, you can now inoculate it with the liquid culture. Use a sterile syringe to extract the liquid culture from the jar. Inject the jar through the self-healing injection port with 10 to 12 milliliters of the liquid culture. Try to cover the whole surface to prevent the mycelium from replicating excessively. The jar will now be incubated in the dark for 3 days at no higher than 70 degrees Fahrenheit. It is important not to incubate longer than 3 to 4 days or you will run into a problem called overlay. If the substrate is not exposed to lighting after three to four days, the mycelium will become very thick on top of the substrate and it will prevent any growth. The next step is to wrap an LED light strip around the bin to initiate fruiting. You should use a light timer to set the schedule for 12 hours on and 12 hours off. Another option would be to use these under cabinet lights. It is best to keep the temperatures between 65 and 68 degrees Fahrenheit while fruiting. After about 14 days, you should start to see some pinning. The cordyceps will be fully mature between the 50th and 60th day. And that's all there is to it. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos just like this one.